I've always heard people say that that green paint was expensive, but now it literally is. Today is the day that I finally paint this old rusty hay wagon. I've been dragging it out far too long. I've been using this as a test surface for all kinds of different techniques to remove rust. I've tested out some paint on here and I've been doing my research trying to learn everything I can to do this the right way. Well, today's the day it's getting painted. And my thought process this whole time was that I would be doing a rust preventative first coat, then the next day do another coat, and then the next day either go to a primer or a paint. Turns out that's not the way you want to do it. You want to do all your coats before the last coat is fully cure. So I need to do a coat, wait two hours, another coat, wait two hours, then I'm going direct on with the paint. And I still have to prep the area. And I want to, this all needs to be done in a day or it has to be re-sanded between coats. So I've got pour 15 cleaner and degreaser, pour 15 rust preventative permanent coating, and a grinding wheel. And I'm gonna get started. Now my original concern was that I had to sand this down to bare metal. That's no longer the case. I'm going to be using a wire brush on a grinder to take off only the big flaky scaly rust. Because if you just do that and kind of smooth it out, then this cleaner and degreaser followed by the pour 15 will paint over this rust no problem. So I'm excited to finally be making progress on this. It's raining and cold. I can't do anything else, so I might as well make some progress. <laughs> Two days in a row, I came out here to work on this, and the same bolts started bothering me. I want to paint the underside of this to protect it from rust. And yesterday, I couldn't get it unbolted and I decided to heck with it, I'm just painting over that. Now I started sanding and I'm looking at those bolts and it's driving me crazy. And then I'm thinking, I didn't really soak them from the bottom where the penetrant could soak down in as well. So I'm gonna flip this thing over and see if I can get the rest of the bolts out. After being frustrated the previous day, not being able to get these bolts out, I decided to try another trick, which is melting candle wax into the threads. I've had people tell me this works really well, but I had mixed results on it today. Half of the bolts I removed were using candle wax, and the other half I used PB Blaster. And I got all the bolts out, so I guess it worked. Good. That metal around it's pretty warm, too. I really tried to take these bolts out, but it just wasn't worth it anymore. There's three left and they're getting cut off just like this one did.
I'm going to be using POR15 rust preventative paint for my base coat on this. So I've got the POR15 cleaner and degreaser. Industrial strength cleaner, non-flammable, water-based, used on engines, fuel tanks, holding tanks, on and on and on, including wood, fiberglass, painted surfaces, professional use. I also got some floor dry, some oil absorbent stuff to use after this. I sprayed it on there and it's kind of liquefied and dissolved any dirt and grease that was on there. Now I think by just rinsing it off, you just kind of flood it off and it's going to be just fine. And then I'm going to have to let it dry before painting. So while it's drying, I'm going to dry the floor with that oil absorbent. Finally, after all this buildup, we are ready for paint. So here are all the parts that I was never planning to take off. All of this has been stripped and degreased and ready to go. Same thing over here. Got my drip cloth put down and I'm going to start painting. One thing I haven't mentioned throughout any of the video is that I have not prepped the metal from right here out, just that four inches where the, the wheel hub and the bearing are. I'm going to paint everything else. When it's completely done and dry, I'll put stands under this, take all the wheels off, check those wheel bearings, and then paint those. Everyone says this POR15 coats your skin about the way it coats these hay wagons and that means that you're not getting it off so you want to wear some good gloves try not to splash it on yourself and then don't touch anything with the gloves that have it on it so i found a podcast that's an hour long i must start that up and just get her done Took me about 35 minutes to paint all of this. Now my memory of reading the can last week was that it said you waited two hours before applying the second coat. I thought two hour, first coat, then two hours, second coat, then two hours, paint, and then you can put a second coat of paint on after 30 minutes. I thought it's going to be about five or six hours to paint. So it took me 35 minutes to paint this and it, it is just now dry enough for a second coat, and it's been almost five hours. 
What the can actually says is that you can do your second coat of this when it's dry to the touch. As soon as it's dry to the touch, if you wait any longer and let it cure, then you have to sand it. And I don't want to sand it between every coat. So I'm trying to wait that right amount of time. Well, I think it's it's good to, for that second coat now, but man, five hours ruins my plans. It's going to be a long night if I stick it out and try to get this painted green tonight. Right now, I'm going to do the second coat, then we'll just see how far I can get. I've got my second coat applied. You know, I could record myself painting all this and fast forward it like I did some of the other clips, but I try to keep these videos to a manageable length, and you know what it looks like to paint with a brush. So I've got to wait for this to dry, and then we'll come back, and I've got a gallon of antique green paint, and we'll get this thing painted. Now, I think there's going to be a couple of points where people might criticize the way I'm doing this, and I'm not, I think I messed up in my own mind on the way I handled those wheel ends. I thought leaving it on these stands and painting it and just not getting right up against the rim would be a good idea. Now I'm really thinking it wasn't because I'm going to have this fresh coat of paint and I'm going to be, you know, sanding that and working right there next to what I've already painted. So probably wasn't the best idea. I should have just taken the wheels off, had this on stands, done the whole top, finished it, flipped it over, and done the bottom. The second thing is I'm going to brush on the antique John Deere paint. And a lot of people are going to say, why would you go to all this trouble to try to do a good job and then not spray it? Well, there's a couple things. One, I'm not great at spraying. And there's a lot of like nooks and crannies, especially on the front axle. And I find I get way too much when I'm trying to get the paint up in those little crevices. That's one reason. Another, it's freezing cold. It's winter. We're not going to see weather warm enough to paint for a long time. So I have to paint with the shop doors closed. And I don't have any way to ventilate in here. So for a small amount of spray painting, it works. For a big project to spray paint in this building with the doors shut, not a great plan. The final reason is I'm particular about having a green hay wagon with yellow wheels that stays looking nice and doesn't rust for a long time. I care that the paint sticks and that it doesn't rust. I do not care if there's brush strokes or little runs in it. Should I? Maybe. But I don't. I want it to be one of those where you say, man, that looks really good from a distance. And... <laughs> I think most of you guys have at least heard that said before. Uh, a lot of amateur like paint jobs on a car look great when they're first done from a distance. But I think this is going to be something I can be proud of. I wanted to go to bed and just... It's pretty late already and I've got hours to wait. But I've been doing my research and normally with the paint, if you let it paint it tonight, let it cure overnight, come back tomorrow and want to finish it, you've got to wait 24 hours, then you have to sand it. It's no big deal, right? Just a little sanding. This pour 15 is so hard that it's really hard to sand. So if I let this cure, it's going to be so much more work. Everything I can see says the best practice is to paint over this before it dries fully. And that's probably four hours from now. So I'm going to have a really long night. But I think it's worth it to not have to sand all this. I've made mention several times of how expensive that poor 15 paint is. Well, I let John Deere charge me double what this paint should have cost. I normally go over to uh, Tractor Supply and I get their farm equipment paint. It doesn't say John Deere on it, or I think it may say for John Deere equipment somewhere on it, but it's like $50 a gallon, and I went to get that, and I'm about to walk up to the counter with it, and I said, wait, John Deere had a different shade of green for their antique 
John Deere green. I'll go over to the dealership and get that. So I go over, pick this up, antique John Deere green. Go up to the counter. I didn't even look at the price. It's like $107 for a gallon. Kind of ridiculous, honestly. Why is this twice as much? I've always heard people say that that green paint was expensive, but now it literally is. You know what? Before I start painting, I'm going to do a little test. The Pour 15 says the way you know if it's ready is you drag your finger across it. And when I drag it, see it? It squeaks. Like, it's it feels kind of dry when I do that. But when I push on it, I leave a fingerprint. So I think that's how it's supposed to be. See what happens. I painted this about half an hour after that. I was also concerned when I bought this Pour 15 that normally you would use a light colored primer for a light colored paint. I was worried that black under the green would mess up the shade of green. The guys that sold me the Pour 15 at O'Reilly's said they didn't think it would be a problem. And it looks fine on there. It didn't try to run or mix whenever I applied it, so let's just start painting. I'd say there's no question I'm going to need at least two coats of the green. Okay, I've marked the time. It's currently 1 a.m., And it says, for a second coat of this green, you either need to do it within 30 minutes of the starting your first application, or allow it to fully cure. And since I've already established I'm not letting it cure, means I need to start repainting this within 30 minutes. Well, it's been taking me right at 30 minutes to paint the whole thing with the Pour 15. So, I'll make note of when I started there. I'll see you guys in just a minute. So it took me about two hours to paint this. I painted for 30 minutes, got about a third of the way through it, stopped and came back to the beginning and put a second coat on. And then I did the next section and everything's had two coats now, including all the loose parts and that center pipe. It's all ready to go. And if any of you guys, my regulars are getting tired of the hay wagon, I'm getting close. Um, obviously once I put all this together, I still have to build the wooden box on top of it. I'm going to do that out of sawmill lumber. But, actually before I sign off, let me just show you how the paint looks. I got a little bit lazy. There at the end and just painted the floor. I made a huge mess. But it's about 3 a.m. and I still have to upload this for 7 a.m. And Dad's coming at 9 to work on sawmills. This has been a great project. I look forward to seeing it finished. I appreciate you guys taking time to watch the video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.